Welcome to Life with AI, Unlocking Your Third Brain. In these short episode series, we'll unravel the profound ways AI is reshaping our lives. Dive in with me as we uncover tools and insights that empower you to elevate your health, intellect, and help you work with maximum efficiency. I'm your host, Richard Fala. Google recently released their new language model called Gemini, and they claim to be one of the best on the market, outperforming every single player, including ChatGPT. In this episode, I will give you a quick overview of this release, and particularly, I'll focus on the benchmark chart by which they displayed how they outperformed ChatGPT on reasoning, on math, on language creation, and more. I myself was lost when I first read it, so after going through the learning process, I want to bring this forth to you because I know next year you'll see this chart popping up a lot, so I want us to understand the nuances and if it makes sense or there are some biases in the chart. But before I do that, I would love to invite you to join our beta release for openbuild.ai. We are building an awesome AI power studio that you and your team can create AI powered recipes by using simple interface. It will help you create internal processes and optimize the way you work within the organization. It's openbuild.ai and we'll send you an invite as soon as it is live. Let's dive into this new awesome release or what's supposed to be an awesome release. There is some controversy around it. Many people are claiming that Google has made false claims. They faked the commercial, which I'll show you in a second of what it's capable of doing. And one of the models, because it has three that they released, is not even out yet. And you cannot even test it to understand its capabilities. Now, you know this year has been a crazy race towards who gets the chunk of the market between the big players, OpenAI in the lead. You have ChatGPT. Then you have Google Bard, which quite frankly for me has been just a glorified search engine research tool. And then a few others like Llama from Facebook, Amazon Q just released, and I did a video on testing that out. It was um, a little underwhelming. So with that being said, so far, Google hasn't done a great job in terms of their competitive edge in generative AI. They're doing awesome on their developer tool set. I'll cover that briefly. But their Bard, specifically the one that's supposed to outperform ChatGPT in the future, has honestly been way underwhelming as well. On this release, welcome to the Gemini era. They released three different versions. One is the Ultra, which is the one they're comparing it to ChatGPT and the other models out there, and they're claiming that it outperforms it. They have the Pro, which they claim is part of Bard's engine. And finally, they have the Nano, which is a language model that fits in a device. It could be a wearable, a necklace, a watch. So these are the three models. The one that hasn't been released yet is the Ultra. And the one they claim that it's out, which is the Pro, should be part of Bard. Now, when I tried Bard, it didn't give me any of the capabilities that they claim it did, whether this was a release that was available to me, and I am in the United States, uh, or not, that's a different story. But I couldn't analyze a lot of the stuff that I tried to pass it through. Now, you can see these charts, and this is really what I want to focus on today. Gemini Ultra, which again, is not available out for us to test, had outperformed ChatGPT at 90%. COT, this is what represents chains of thoughts at 32. That means they gave it 32 different tasks that follows what the process of chain of, of thoughts, like breaking down the logic by which it got to the answer. And after 32 tests, it outperformed ChatGPT, which was given five shots without that same reasoning process. Okay, and hopefully I'm explaining this right. So for me, this is a little bit biased, but as I will break down the chart, some things will probably are on par or within the same number. This is the one I'll dive a little bit deeper into. They have a text chart that benchmarks Gemini with ChatGPT, and you can see the blue ones, that means it outperforms it. And they have the second one, which is the multi-modal on image processing, video, and audio. And here it claims also that it outperforms ChatGPT on all fronts. 
continuing some of the capabilities that they claim it's set out to do is to understand video in depth and it can reason very quickly and give you suggestions and recommendations so I can parse it a video and create a code for that. Things that ChatGPT can already do, but they're claiming that it does it better. I can give it some objects and ask it to generate ideas for me based on these objects. And it can even identify some sort of graphs and display some ideas, play games, and so on. So it has a lot of these features. I encourage you watch and scroll through this to understand it. But there was this controversy of some of the videos were not actually done live, the demos were put together, and that Google really lied about the capabilities of the model. I'm not here to argue this. I'm pretty sure Google will eventually deliver something. But so far for me, my expectations of BARD and the different language models that Google has haven't lived up to the power of ChatGPT. I'm deeply appreciative for every release out there, even though some of them are not quite as strong as they claim to be. But overall, BARD has been falling behind ChatGPT's engine and Google hasn't been able to keep up with the creative of OpenAI. Now, with that being said, Google has done a great job in their new cloud. So if you are a developer and you'd like to build some models, now they have Generative AI Studio. And don't, don't really worry about this. This is primarily for developers. But I guess what I wanted to show you is that they are creating different components if a developer is trying to create their own models. And it makes it super easy to do that with their libraries, with their different categories from chat, summaries, clarifications, extraction, ideation. And they also have it for vision and for speech. I tested some of the stuff and quite frankly, I don't think that the responses were in part of what I've been getting from ChatGPT's API. All right, so thank you Google for providing this to the developer community. But BARD on its own is really lacking a lot of capabilities and I'll tell you why. For me, this chart, chart right here has a lot of things that I don't understand. So I wanted to kind of decipher some of this language. What does this mean? And give me an example of how this test might look like. Now again, COT is a chain of thought. It's a process by which the language model arrived to a result. And if you know language models, you will know if you're telling the actual thread to break down how it arrived to the answer, it trains it even better on solving the next task at hand. So by using that chain of thought command and giving it 32 tasks before you give it the actual final test, you're giving it a lot of advantage over GPT's engine. In this case, they gave it five shots without that particular reasoning process. So as you can see here, Gemini Ultra, which I repeat, is not available for testing yet, outperforms GPT-4 in all of these except for Hella Swag. So let me break these down to you. And what I did, I simply took a snapshot. First, I went to BARD itself, which claims that it's using Gemini Pro. And I parsed up the command that I want you to analyze this snapshot using Gemini Pro. Now, it did give me a little basic answers. But as I started to ask some questions like, what is COT? What are shots? What is MADGE? It really didn't recognize it. And it gave me some random explanations for it. And after a couple of attempts, honestly, I just quit on it. And I realized that BART cannot analyze the benchmarks by which Google themselves have measured it on. So I went back to ChatGPT. I uploaded the image and I asked it to analyze it for me. And it did a really good job diving deep into the answers. What is MMLU? which is probably what we use the most, asking some general questions on STEM, science, technology, and so on. And, and around reasoning, you know, to extract data from text and to analyze it and to reason around the text. And there are three different models for, the, for that. Math and code. And again, chain of thoughts, which is the COT that you see right here. What this means is a prompting strategy where the AI is encouraged to break down its reasoning to get better at what it does. 
So what are these different options? MMLU, as an example, is Massive Multitask Language Understanding. That's what that stands for. It's understanding across a broad range of subjects. Some of the example here or the task at hand is a question might be a multiple choice question about history. For example, who was the first president of the United States? And you give it multiple options or you can just let it answer on its own. That's a general MMLU uh, test that they did here. So Gemini seems to outperform GPT on that front by 3.6%. Then they come down to reasoning. And here they have big bench hard. So what that means is a set of tasks that require complex and nuanced reasoning, often across multiple steps, not only from the first question, but after a few follow on questions. For example, if all roses are flowers and some flowers fade quickly, can we conclude that some flowers or some roses fade quickly? That's an example of a big bench hard that goes through a series of questions and they call it multi-step reasoning. Then they have the drop. It's a short for discrete reasoning over paragraphs. It focuses on reading comprehension where the AI must extract information and perform discrete operations over it, like additions and counting. As an example, I can say, how many points did the winning team score in the second half? So I could have you know, a large explanation of what happened in the second half and the job here or the question is to extract values from that explanation. So that's what drop is. And the Gemini supposedly outperforms ChatGPT as you can see. Then you have Hello Swag, where this is the only benchmark that GPT supposedly outperforms a Gemini. It's test common sense reasoning with tasks that require predicting the ending of incomplete scenarios. For example, a man is putting a tie. What is the man doing? Is he going to work? Is he going to a party, to a dinner, a black tie event? So this is sort of like what Hello Swag is, is predicting what is the ending of an incomplete scenario. We can see now some of these tests that we're benchmarked against are actually the foundation of how developers and scientists build these models around. There's millions of lines of code to be able to process this alone or to do drop reasoning or hella swag. Then they jump into math. Um, and by the way, you can see this was given three shots. So this is fair. I'm not sure what variable shots is. It could be many with different contacts. Now here under math, this is primarily for like grade school math, 8K, basic arithmetic and manipulations. And then you have the math, like algebra, geometry, pre-calculus, and so on. As an example, solve for x, the equation, 2x plus 3 equal 15. So Bard seemed to be, or I'm sorry, Gemini, um, outperforming GPT-4. Finally, when it comes to code, you have human eval. Primarily writing code and human eval is for Python. It's a programming language that coders use to write code. It's one of the many out there where the AI must write functioning code snippets. It replaces very basic uh, developer uh, skills to write functions and such. As an example, you can say, can you write me a function in Python that takes a list of numbers and returns the even numbers in new list? That could be its own function. It might take a developer depending on how advanced they are. Let's say about five to 10 minutes to write it and test it. It could do it for you and save you that time overall. Then you have the natural to code, which is what you see right here. And here it says also Python code generation, but with the data set that the model has not seen before focusing on generalization. Okay, so this is just testing its entire understanding of the code and whereas some functions could be repetitive, like capitalizing, creating something from scratch. As an example, you can say, can you convert a string to lowercase and replace spaces with underscore? That's an example of natural to code. And here again, it was kind of on par in terms of how many shots. 
and it outperformed it as well. All right, last but not least, this chart is straightforward. I'm not gonna dive too deep into these, but in terms of image processing, in terms of video and in terms of audio, I honestly do not believe that a Gemini performs better as I've tested side by side the capabilities of Bard, at least with Gemini Pro, not the Ultra. And I can do anything with Gemini, whereas GPT-4 can process my images, it can process my text fairly quickly, which is my audio and so on. So with that being said, this is what the chart entails. It broke down the logic, the reasoning, the math, the calculation, core generation, image, video, audio, and they're using some of those benchmarks. Now Whisper here, for instance, is what OpenAI called their own engine to process audio, and they have V3 and V2. Here they have the perception test, MCQA, and these are some general terms. Um, but in terms of analyzing video, so you can upload something and it can decipher it for you and tell you the context of it. I haven't tested this. The main takeaway here is you have a new language model that's supposedly going to bring us, people building AI or people using AI, um, even more options. But so far, what Google has claimed to be a better option and outperforms ChatGPT is not even close to being there. Um, I hope you found this breakdown of the chart helpful. You will see charts like this in the future, comparing other language models as well. There are plenty of them out there on the market, comparing the GPT-4, 4.5 that's coming, 3.5, uh, and you can understand a little bit deeper of what are those different types of tests that are made on these models. If you like the content that we're bringing forth, please, please like, share, subscribe, or simply leave me a comment so I understand how can I improve these different episodes to bring you the most value in all things AI. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you on the upcoming episode.